this top of this orbital with a plus written there for the sign of this function that describes its mathematics passes at the center through zero and then this shape is exactly the same at the bottom of the diagram. The top and the bottom are identical in shape or if you sweep them through space to sweep out a volume, the volumes described are identical. And now we're talking about something that is a property of an individual orbital, not a combination. But it's the same language and the same physical picture about symmetry that you need to be imagining. The top is exactly the opposite to the bottom. This orbital is anti-symmetric. Whereas the S orbital, that beautiful easy sphere, is completely the same. Whichever way you inspect a sphere, it's the same. That's a symmetrical orbital. Now we are combining in a symmetric combination these two orbitals to produce the pi bond. This molecular orbital is still anti-symmetric. It still has that same nodal plane. It still has that property, equal and opposite top and bottom. But it's the symmetric combination. And to complete the picture, we need a second combination. The anti-symmetric combination has plus at the top on the left and minus at the top on the right and the reverse in the lower lobes of these orbitals. That anti-symmetric combination of two orbitals is now the opposite <laughs> of the first combination and that produces pi star. Let us find these two nodal planes. One of them is through here where there is a change in sign from plus to minus. And then there is only one other change in sign when we go from here plus to minus. So these two nodal planes are the initial one which was present in the original p orbital and an extra one which is a consequence of the anti-symmetric combination. And in the pi bonding orbital, just the one nodal plane which was the property of the original orbital because the symmetric combination hasn't introduced an extra one. The anti-symmetric combination will always introduce an extra nodal plane.